Serge was dying. An incurable sickness was killing him and he could no longer fight it. White lilies, I am asking for a bouquet of white lilies, he murmured. Serge Lefar held these flowers every time he played one of his trademark roles. Prince Albert in Giselle The legend of Belly wanted to leave the world as if he was leaving the stage after his brilliant performances. With an arm full of fragrant flowers, they always reminded him of dance. The celebrity of Bali was constantly offered French citizenship. However, the maestro spent his entire immigrant life with a temporary passport. Serge Lefar remained Ukrainian forever. Countess Lilian Alefeld Laurvik visited Ukraine, the homeland of her deceased husband Serge Lefar, in 1998. She carried two belly slippers as a member of the great dancer. One of them, golden, was the highest prize in belly. And the red one was the one in which he once trained in a studio in Kiev. Never separate them, she asked. One of them has fame, and the other sweat and pain. Tarasevska Street 1, Kiev, a five-story building with an astonishing stucco and turrets, which has miraculously survived after all those wars and revolutions. It's now an island of modern architecture among typical high-rise buildings. The Parisian Icarus spent his childhood years here. Young Serhi was the fourth child in the family of Mihailo Lifar and Sofia Marchenko. He was born on 2nd April 1904. My father, an employee of the forestry department, was an authority in my eyes, who implied trust and instruction but was distant from us. My mother, who was a beautiful woman and portrayed her name Sofia, was closer to us. The parents called their son by a tender name, Serozhinka. The boy grew up in love. The most terrible punishment for him could be to miss evening playtime with his favorite furry pet. The windows at home looked over the university's botanical gardens. Little Serhi would run along these winding paths with his brothers and sisters. Legendary Kaniv. The city was an outpost on the border of Kiev lands and wild prairie since Kievan Rus to 18th century. These lands are the homeland of such famous Zaporizhians as Ivan Pitkova and Samilo Kishka. Sir, he came into contact with nature at his grandfather's estate in Kaniv, capturing in his heart beautiful images of Ukraine. From large plains, endless rye fields dotted with cornflowers and wildflowers, folk songs and colorful celebrations and festive traditions. The boy often recalled how his grandfather talked about the heroic past of Ukraine, showing diplomas turned yellow with the years from Zaporizhian army hetmans and Kosh Ottoman seals. Perhaps the blood of great ancestors ran in this young chap. I put on a suit and beautiful cap bearing the monogram of the Alexander Gymnasium. I dream of becoming a soldier, cavalryman, a slender and tall handsome man who rides a horse that's white as snow and boldly races at the head of an attack squadron.
the yellow campus of Kyiv National University of Taras Shevchenko. Students now study humanities in this legendary building. However, back in 1913, the halls of Alexander Gymnasium were located here. 13-year-old Sergei Lifar was sent to study here, and then he continued his education at Gymnasium No. 8 in Kyiv. After classes, the hard-working student sang in the St. Sophia Church Choir. He received a grant for his progress. He was taking piano lessons at the Kyiv Conservatory as well. His parents were proud of their successful and talented son. However, they never allowed him to go to the theater. The family considered Melpomene House as a symbol of chaos and temptation. One day, friends told Serhi that artists of the Kyiv Opera would be dancing to Chopin and Schumann, whose plays the young man had studied endlessly. Curiosity won him over here. The young musician went to a ballet class of the famous dancer Bronislava Nizhinska. Once he'd visited the class, so he felt that ballet attracted him with its pas de day dance duet. It was from that moment that the passionate affair between Lefar and ballet began. My heart raced gently and excitedly. My soul woke up from a dead sleep, and I felt how tears came to my eyes from the rapture that has taken me over. I fell in love. I became a dancer without knowing how to dance or any dancing techniques. Yet I knew that I would learn it and nothing and any circumstances could stop me on my journey. At first, the strict teacher gave Serhi a very negative reference. Nizhinska considered the boy to be unpromising, but persistent rehearsals soon gave him excellent results. I found my beloved one. I felt in love with her, only her, and nothing existed anymore, as it faded before this great joy of love. I felt that I'd always wanted this love, this one lover, dance, dance music, dance love. After the revolution in the Russian Empire of October 1917, the leader of the Soviet People's Commissars, Vladimir Ulyanov Lenin, started preparations to march on Ukraine. The Red Army headed to Kiev, the heart of the state. While the fire of chaos raged, life became more and more joyless and lost its beauty and became full of losses, anxiety and danger. Long months of endless stir began. For two years, the authorities in Kyiv changed without a break. Every change was accompanied by exploding shells, robberies, arrests and executions. Madame Nizhinska left Ukraine and made use of an invitation to work from theater patron Serge de Diaghilev. Besides, the famous ballerina was lured by the Paris stage. Still obsessed with ballet, Lifar decided to train independently. He rented a small studio on Irininska Street and isolated himself from the world, training day and night. He mastered the basis of classic dance and kept practicing every movement and gesture. I lived in fear for 15 months while isolating myself and working without a break as though possessed. I was challenging my doppelganger in the mirror. He was always the teacher while I remained the student. A little while later, Bronislava Nizhinska sent a telegram to her former studio. 
she asked that her five best students be sent to Paris to perform at Diaghilev's Ballet's Russes. The news shocked Serhii. It's a chance, thought the naive young man. Yet the Soviet Republic had already closed her borders to the capitalist world. Every attempt to cross it without special permission was severely punished. Lefar decided to take a risk and was caught and almost executed. The young man was thrown into a ward with people dying from typhoid. The entire floor of the cell was literally covered with lies. I thought that my only redemption was to stay standing. I stood for four days and four nights until the veins in my legs became swollen. I even wanted to jump out of a window, but the thought that I could hurt my legs and never be able to dance stopped me. The exhausted young man was called into the building on Sadova Street 5, where the extraordinary commission was housed. Lefar was given the chance to go to Paris. In return, he was asked to cooperate with the authorities and to be agent of the Soviet Secret Service. Lefar refused and thought about making a new attempt to escape. Fortune smiled this time, and for the fabulous sum of 50 million rubles, he was able to get documents and escape from the red cage. 18-year-old Serhi left Kyiv in December 1923. Mother told me, save yourself, my son. Later, when dancing, I would always remember her eyes full of tears. Paris, Paris, the Grand Opera building rises away from the Boulevard des Capucines. The capital's residents often call it Palais Garnier Paris. It was in one of these palaces that Serge Lefar from Kiev took his first steps into the world of true ballet. Ignoramuses. That is what the director of the ballet's Russes theatrical company Serge Diaghilev thought of his newcomers after their first performance. Yet Lefar could become an amazing dancer, Diaghilev thought. Serge acquires a new life under the protection of a patron. He learns the world of paintings and visits salons where bohemian people gather. The dancer transforms himself incredibly quickly from a member of a corps de ballet to a solo dancer. And in May 1929 he goes onto the stage as the prodigal son and earns admiration, applause and a bouquet of white lilies. The audience literally went on the rampage after the performance. Many cried, but none of them knew that I was playing myself, my life. Serge Lefar shone on the stage of Ballet Russes by virtue of hard work on his technique and dance expression. On many levels, this was the merit of Serge de Diaghilev, but then Diaghilev passed away, who would continue the work of friend and teacher. Lefar took upon himself the tough burden of combining the duties of leading dancer and director of the Paris Opera. It was a reckless decision, his friends said. In particular, Lefar had to revive French ballet, which was the trendsetter in the 18th and 19th centuries. However, fortune favors the brave. Serge brought together young enthusiasts and their rehearsals ran for eight hours. He gave them the secrets of mastery and taught duet routines to his protégés. He insisted that ballet should carry a message and not simply exist as a form of entertainment. He strengthened the performance style of artists with lyricism and expression, when masculinity was mixed with elegance. The Lefar's masterclasses resulted in the emergence of remarkable ballerinas Yvette Chavaret, Nina Vorobiova, Lisette Darsonval, and dancers Yuli Alharov, Alexander Kaluzhny, Roland Petit. Fame, recognition, applause – what else do true artists need? The peak of the master's work was the belly Icar. Critics noted that the production is an astonishing achievement in dramatic and plastic terms 
an example of a clear and significant neoclassical style. Ballet performances like Mirages, Fedre, Sud and Blanc, Romeo and Juliet became masterpieces in the world of dance. Lefar danced in his own productions. He embodied both heroic and poetic roles. One day he is Apollo and the next he is Alexander the Great, Bacchus and Don Juan. The applause, admiration and his favorite white lilies. The choreographer used classical music and the music of contemporary artists Stravinsky, Prokofiev and Ravel. He entrusted scenography to his friends, famous painters of that era – Picasso, Benoit, Cocteau, Chagall. Lefar mesmerized many through his musicality, perfection and soulfulness. His energy and artistry ignited people. As a choreographer, he was able to reveal the maximum potential of every artist. He was loved by colleagues and audiences alike. For instance, prominent French writer and philosopher Paul Valéry called Lefar a poet of movement. Lefar worked as though possessed. He desperately dreamt that his belly would one day be staged in his native Kiev. My mother is resurrected in my memory, but she presents herself not on a festive evening when she was so beautiful in a wreath of flowers, a necklace and an embroidered shirt. She stands before me when we say farewell, when she smiles with eyes full of tears and I go to meet my destiny. Lefar wrote several books about ballet, founded the University of Dance, Department of Choreography at the Sorbonne and the International University of Choreography. He held commemorative events for his friend and mentor Serge Didyagilev. He was a charismatic person and had an army of admirers as well as enemies. Serge Lefar got his enemies after he made careless political comments. France declared war on Germany on September 3, 1939. Yet France did not take part in the active phase of battles, and this passive position led to the German army invading. Wehrmacht soldiers were walking on the streets of Paris on June 14, 1940. Serge Lefar, as a public person, signed a collective letter during Nazi occupation. Some say he was allegedly welcoming the fascists. Famous French director and screenwriter Dominique Deluge, who made a film about the dancer, wrote I believe that Lefar made a mistake. His political myopia was rather the impulse of a creative individual who misunderstood the situation. Lefar never worked with Hitler's forces. He avoided personal meetings with the Fuhrer, turned down Goebbels' request to hand over a portrait of Wagner by Renoir to Hitler's personal collection. My public activities were in the main aimed at saving the Paris Opera, French national property as well as the museum and library of Swedish magnate Rolf de Mar, the Rachmaninoff Conservatory of Paris, ballet schools as well as my personal library and collections from being destroyed by the Germans. However, people in Paris started to spread rumors that Lefar cooperated with Hitler's forces. French resistance fighters sentenced Serge to death. The choreographer had to stay in Monaco for several years. As an emigrant, Serge wanted to return to his homeland, Ukraine. He hoped that Soviet rule would collapse under pressure from the Nazis. He even planned to go to Kiev, but his dreams sank in the reality of war. The choreographer was justified after World War II ended. The commander and future president of France, Charles de Gaulle, befriended the dancer and admired the ballet maestro's talent. I awakened ballet at the Paris Opera, which was in a terrible and backward state. This ballet became one of the best in the world thanks to my great efforts. At the same time, I was a patron of the National Theatre ordering for it the compositions of such greats as Stravinsky and Prokofiev, all from my own funds. I asked my first friends, Picasso, Chagall, Dali, for help, and they gave their works to the opera for free. 
Lefar discovered a talent for painting at the age of 65. He had painted before, on programs, posters, notes with pencil, grease, face paint. Exhibitions of paintings are popular in Cannes, Paris, Monte Carlo, Venice, and yet the maestro was rather reserved about his hobby. I dedicated these graphics, almost plastic works, to my friend Pablo Picasso. He was so kind that it surprised him, admired them, and advised me to continue. However, I am not an artist, but a choreographer, who sometimes paints. It's hard to believe, but such a successful person as Lefar had no home of his own. He spent his whole life living in hotels. Everything that he acquired, he gave to charity and his own collection. The dancer's life changed after he met Lilian Alefeld Laurvig. The rich lady was a fairy godmother to Lefar. Their marriage could be described as an amicable union. Serge adored his lover for her youth and beauty, while she became the guiding star for him in his creative work. Serge Lefar had dreamt all his life of staging his belly on stages in Kiev. He made the first attempts to correct his relationship with the Soviet Union at the end of 1950. The company of the Grand Opera received an offer to tour the USSR. Lefar wanted to go to Moscow as well. However, he discovered at the airport that the Russian ambassador had denied his visa request. The maestro thought that the theater's management had somehow meddled and he quit his position. He nonetheless returned to the role of ballet master. The famous Ukrainian could return to the USSR only within a group of tourists in 1961. I saw Kyiv for one more time, which was different to the one I had in my memories. Yet it was bathing in soft light, and I felt the spicy aroma of stuffed eggplants, the burning taste of vodka, which, as they say, encourages one to dance. Serge Lefar staged more than 200 bellies, founded the University of Choreography at the Grand Opera, gave lectures in history studies and dance theory at the Sorbonne. He was also the rector of the University of Dance, professor at the Higher School of Music, and honorary president of the National Dance Council under UNESCO. The list goes on and on. Serge Lefar was awarded the title of Knight of the Legion of Honor for reviving French belly. He was elected a member of the Institut de France, rector of the University of Dance. His belly legacy enriches the repertoire of the Opera Garnier. The National Opera of Ukraine staged the ballets Sud and Blanc, Romeo and Juliet, and Morning Serenade. Lefar created a new movement in ballet, neoclassicism. Academic dance acquired new modern features. A Ukrainian, Serge Lefar represented French neoclassicism, like the Georgian, George Balanchine represented American neoclassicism. Serhii Mikhailovich Lefar died in December 1986 in Switzerland. There was a bouquet of white lilies and a note left on the table. Goodbye life, goodbye Lillian, my angel. Goodbye my friends, goodbye beauty and nature. He is buried at saint Genevieve de bois Cemetery near Paris. His grave bears the laconic inscription which he asked for while still alive. Serge Lefar from Kiev. Dance is an art that I feel at any moment of my life, which I feel in myself as the original element of my being. Serge Lefar.